So you don't have an opinion about freedom of religion? No opinion? Tell me. Of course I have an opinion. Religious freedom means to me that you can worship a yellow dog if that's what you so desire. You have that right as long as you're not trying to hurt other people in doing it. Religious groups decide for themselves what their followers should be doing. Freedom of religion is not freedom from religion. However, I think people should do it within the, the confines of their own homes. People want um, voices silenced that are not in agreement with theirs, but they don't want their own voice silenced. Everyone should have their own opinion. That's why I love debate so much. Oh, religion is a hard thing. It's a really hard thing. We have to respect everybody, culture, religion, opinion. I think everybody's a little bit afraid right now that, that somehow we're not going to be able to practice our religion without, without being persecuted. If there is a more foundational issue uh, relative to this country, I don't know what it is. There is a battle over the meaning of that freedom. The contest is of eternal importance, and it is your generation that must understand the issues and make the efforts to prevail. Religious freedom is the uh, right to practice your faith to have a faith and to manifest it publicly and in private and without having someone stopping you and say you can't do that. It's also the right to act and to interact with people of different faiths, both in private and in public, in a way that's consistent with your religious convictions. People can make it sound very persuasive that, well, as long as you can believe what you want, then the rest of it doesn't really matter. But if you can't manifest your beliefs, then they, they lose a great deal of their meaning. And as the U.S. State Department recently said, religious freedom is essential to human dignity, and it correlates strongly with economic development and with stable democratic societies. I think we're currently seeing increased threats to religious autonomy, which is eroding our right to religious freedom. Certainly in the context of colleges and universities, we're seeing more and more policies that are being set that would require religious student organizations to have leaders that are non-believers. And these policies are forcing these religious student groups off campus. There are also threats to religious individuals in their professions in not being coerced into acting in a way that's contrary to their religious beliefs. So for example, Christian pharmacists who object to dispensing abortion-inducing drugs and state regulations that would force them to dispense these drugs even when the state could very easily permit them to refer these customers elsewhere. Yet, they are forcing them to do so against their religious convictions. Another example is photographers or innkeepers who would be forced by regulations to provide commercial services to those whose behavior is censured by their religious teachings. For example, a Christian wedding photographer was fined because she refused to photograph a ceremony that violated her religious teachings on the family. Freedom of conscience is the right to not be forced to do something that violates the truth that God has spoken to your heart. And so it's that freedom of conscience that undergirds this freedom of religion. Religious discussions and faith and religious freedom, these are very, um very delicate issues, they are uh, controversial, they are difficult, and sometimes, you know, the, the strongest feelings of a person might be connected to their faith, and so you can easily offend someone, and you can cause problems, even if you have good intentions. So I think uh, in order to avoid these problems and contention, and instead create peace and, and love like you really want to do and respect, I think it's important to, to educate ourselves and to learn how to be respectful. I think practicing what we preach is the second priority. So not criticizing other religions, not making fun of other religions, teaching your children to respect other religions, learning about your friends' religious beliefs. I think that's all part of um, 
shoring up the foundation for religious freedoms and then doing something. We could go to the internet, we could uh, go to the library, we could get engaged and involved in a local interfaith organization or maybe an NGO that works with religious freedom. I think as people volunteer in their community, there's a wide range of ways we can volunteer. And then your position that when that religious freedom issue comes up, you are already integrated into that organization, you're credible, and you can help them make wise decisions so that religious freedom is protected. And that is one of the exciting things about working with religious freedom is you feel the brotherhood and you feel the common cause from all the different people and you feel that we are all children of God. You don't have to have any special kind of training to get involved and protect these rights and be aware of these rights. It, it, all it takes is an interest and a willingness to speak up and be involved. In the 21st century, we cannot flee any longer. We're going to have to fight for laws and circumstances and environments that allow the free exercise of religion and our franchise in it. My challenge today is that you join with people of all faiths who feel accountable to God in defending religious freedom so it can be a beacon for morality. We caution you to be civil and responsible as you defend religious liberty and moral values. We ask that you do this on the internet and in your personal interactions in the neighborhoods and communities where you live. Be an active participant, not a silent observer. I'm involved in nonprofit work and I'm currently a student uh, working to get my degree. We do community outreach with various nonprofit associations. A chamber board member for Leavenworth, Washington. The Interfaith uh, Council in Whatcom County, Washington. Children's Community Choir. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes. We're um, helping to organize a, a concert, a charity concert at the moment. I'm involved with Christian Club in my high school. I'm part of the food pantry in our community. I'm president of the Latino Student Association at my school. The easiest thing in the world, you know, just set up your Facebook page. On Twitter, I get on and I share the things that I, I deeply care about. We don't know when or where the issue is gonna come up. There's no way to anticipate that. But the Lord knows, and He's gonna help us be in the position to make a difference. And I just, I believe that with all my heart. If it has been demonstrated that I have been willing before heaven to die for a Mormon, I am bold to declare before heaven that I am just as ready to die in defending the rights of a Presbyterian, a Baptist, or a good man of any other denomination for the same principle which would trample upon the rights of the Latter-day Saints would trample upon the rights of the Roman Catholics or of any other denomination who would be unpopular and too weak to defend themselves. Joseph Smith, 1843.